My name is Luke Laffin, and I am a preventive cardiologist at the main campus of the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, it's great to speak with you today about a topic that I get asked about um, at least a few times a week uh, from my patients um, that see me. Um, and really that topic is supplements and cardiovascular disease. Um, are they helpful? Are they harmful? Am I wasting my money? Am I not? Um, and these are all really good questions. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have a lot of great data to guide us, um, but we'll review some of the data that we may have um, to help us make the right decision about whether we should be taking supplements or not for our heart health. In general, um, patients with established cardiovascular disease, so um, history of stroke, heart attack, maybe they've had bypass surgery before, in those scenarios, really the data for supplements in preventing future cardiovascular disease is pretty minimal. Um, a multivitamin is rarely a wrong choice, okay? So people can definitely take an over-the-counter multivitamin, uh, particularly if your doctor prescribes it or if your diet is not uh, really a diet of moderation or doesn't have um, a, a rich component of vegetables, fruits, um, you know, whole grains, um, and then protein as well. So multivitamin oftentimes is, is very acceptable. Um, other things that are commonly prescribed, such as fish oil, um, so omega-3 fatty acids, CoQ10 um, is a very common supplement as well. Uh, the real take home on that is that we don't have enough data to tell us that they're helpful or not. Now, some people swear by CoQ10 um, and that it helps prevent some of the statin-associated muscle symptoms that we can see in about 5% of people that take statins. Uh, the data doesn't necessarily reflect that when you look at you know, large clinical trials. Um, that being said, I don't think it's hurting anyone if you take it. Um, um, and so if it does seem to help you, that is a reasonable option in that setting. Over-the-counter fish oil is a little bit more controversial. Um, we know that it can have a small um, impact on serum triglyceride levels, um, but how much it actually affects LDL cholesterol lowering is a little bit questionable, and how it impacts ultimately uh, the reduction of cardiovascular events is also questionable. Um, most of the time, um, I, I like to say to people that you know, it's probably not hurting you from a physiology perspective, but it's hurting you from a wallet perspective because you may not be getting a benefit and you're just paying more for these supplements. Um, there is purified forms of fish oil that have been studied and those are actually prescriptions, so those aren't supplements. Um, and they um, have been studied um, in a variety of clinical trials most recently, and the data is a little bit mixed. Um, you know, fish oil typically is two things, DHA and EPA, um, and certain supplements that are pure EPA have shown a benefit. So that's something you can definitely talk to your doctor about if you're at high risk for cardiovascular disease. Now, in those individuals that have never had a stroke or heart attack, but have been talked about, have talked about with their physician or their, their nurse practitioner um, about what the next steps are for reducing your future risk of strokes and heart attacks, um, you know, there, there's a few options out there. Obviously, we need to have the, the healthy diet and the diet of moderation um, and the exercise component that we always talk about. Um, are there supplements that are um, helpful for quote unquote heart health? Um, well, we don't really know. As you may know, many of these supplements or the vast majority of them are not regulated by the FDA. Um, and so they can't be marketed as lowering cholesterol or preventing cardiovascular disease. And so oftentimes you'll see on the package, helpful with heart health. What does that really mean? Well, your guess is as good as mine, okay? Um, the data is pretty limited when we look at um, any studies of them. Now, you sure you can point to one small study in a small group of healthy patients or in some animal model that may show a beneficial effect, but unfortunately the data for most of these supplements is lacking. We do know um, that um, supplements such as red yeast rice um, can lower LDL cholesterol, so that is something that you know, a fair number of my patients take on their own. Um, we don't necessarily recommend it, um, but it's a potential option. It's important to know that red yeast rice is essential, is monocolon K, that's one of the components of it, and that's the active ingredient that lowers LDL cholesterol. Um, that's the same as prescription lovastatin, which is a statin. Um, the problem with red yeast rice in, in certain circumstances is that we just don't know what's exactly in it um, because it's not well regulated in, in many circumstances. Um, other things that we think about, you know, garlic, cinnamon, etc. 
Um, we don't really know at this point. Um, and so that really um, has prompted one of the more important clinical trials that we're doing at the Cleveland Clinic um, in this calendar year, 2020. It's called the SPORT, SPORT study. Um, SPORT is an acronym for Supplements, Placebo, or Resuvastatin trial. And what it's looking at um, is, uh, it's a short trial. It's only uh, 200 patients, and it's only 28 days in length. And what we're looking at is patients without a history of cardiovascular disease, but have been recommended to at least consider taking cholesterol-lowering medicines. Um, and so they have a certain uh, cardiovascular risk um, in their future, uh, typically defined as uh, greater than 5% risk of a stroke or heart attack over 10 years, um, but less than 20% risk. And what we're doing is we're randomizing individuals to uh, either a very low dose of a FDA-approved statin called resuvastatin, so five milligrams, placebo, or one of six supplements, turmeric, garlic, cinnamon, red yeast rice, plant sterols, um, and an over-the-counter fish oil. And we're seeing, you know, really, if we can establish some data, do these effectively lower LDL cholesterol compared to placebo and compared to, um, to the FDA-approved resuvastatin. It's an interesting study. We're looking forward to getting patients enrolled. Um, we're only enrolling patients in Ohio, but if you're interested in participating, you can always reach out to us by, via email. Um, the email address is uh, the letter C, the number five, um, the capital letter R, and then clinical trials with an S at the end, at ccf.org. Uh, so thanks very much for uh, the opportunity to give a, a little background on supplements and cardiovascular disease. Uh, the take-home point is, is that um, we really don't know um, how these supplements impact um, or at least reduce cardiovascular disease. And as always, it's really important to talk with your treating physician about the risks and benefits of supplements um, and also um, understand that some of these supplements can interact with current medications that you're taking. So it's always worthwhile to um, discuss them with your physician um, before starting. Thank you very much.